Failure's never final when the father's in the room.
storm cry Then from north to south And east to west We hear Christ be magnified Oh, Christ be magnified
through the motions of worship, but you can tell they're not really worshiping. But I watched you today, and I saw many of you actually with smiles on your faces as you were singing these songs that the words meant so much. And I said, yeah, that's what we want. We want to be in his presence. We could just sit here in his presence. And so let me just say, that's a big compliment. And this pastor is a worshiper. His wife is a worshiper. He's imparted that to you. This church is a worshiping church. So this message that I'm about to give you today, man, it's, going, it's not going to be the hard pill to swallow that I'm going to talk about here just about for many of you. For some of you, it may be. Uh, but it is a word from the Lord. And I, I count it as a privilege and an honor to be here today to bring this message because I realize something. I'm an ambassador for Christ. God has a message for you. Amen. He has a word for you. And he's given me the privilege to bring you this word. And I think, Lord, what an honor that is. This man has the privilege every week of bringing you the word. The greatest prophet that you should be listening to is that man right there sitting in the front row. He's the prophet of this house. Uh, and there's a lot of people going around looking for a prophetic word. And they go here and they go there and they go here and they get all kinds of words and we don't know what those words are. But this is a man you need to be listening to. Because every week he is seeking the Lord. Lord, what do you want to say to the people? And he stands up here every week and he gives you a prophetic word from the word of God. And uh, he's the one you need to miss. Any other prophetic word you get, you better just bring it to him and say, now, what do you think about this word? Uh, so it's important that you, we listen to the men and the women of God that God has put, us, uh, put, put you in their care. And so it's an honor for me to be here and uh, to be a part of uh, Church of the Rock Network of Ministers. I pastored a church for 30 years, turned it over to a younger man five years ago, and then we began this organization, Church on the Rock Network of Ministers, and I have the privilege of traveling around to churches. And in April, I'll get to go to Church on the Rock in uh, Kenya, in Africa. We're going to be going and ministering to the overseers of the 150 churches that are there, and we're going to have a conference. Then I get the privilege of hopping on an airplane, going an hour, getting in a vehicle, and traveling three hours to go visit a missionary that was sent out of my church some years ago. Let me tell you about Loretta. Loretta was 65 years old when she felt the call of God to go to Christ for the Nations after her husband passed away. She sold her house. She went to Christ for the Nations. And then she took a little trip after the kids begged her to go with them to Africa. And she fell in love with the African people. Started traveling back and forth. At the age of 72, she came to me and said, Pastor, I think I'm going to move to Africa. At age 72, she moved to Africa. She is 86 years old today, still living in Africa, has built her a little prayer center compound. And just this week, she was ministered to 100 children, 100 widows, and she does it all on her retirement money. And uh, wow, you're never too old. Uh, you better say, when you say, God, I'm willing to do anything you want to, watch out. He may take you up on that. But she said yes, and I'm telling you, she's battled malaria about five or six times. And right now she came home uh, a, a couple of years ago to get her knee replaced so she could get back on the field. And I called her the other day. She goes, well, I'm not getting around to, well, I need a hip replacement, but I don't know if I'll get it done. But she's there now, and I get to go see her. And I, I tell you, she's my shero in the faith and uh, <laughs> woman of God. So what a privilege it is to go literally around the world and see what God's doing. Let me tell you something. God's up to something. And he's just letting us be a part of it. There are people, there's over 170,000 people every day coming to know Jesus somewhere in the world. There are 3,500 churches being birthed every day in the world. Think about that. And many people think, oh, well, people are doing away with the church. They're not going to church. The COVID hit. We're not going back. Well, let me tell you, the, the church is alive and well. Yeah. Now, COVID did a number on us. I'll have to admit that. It, it kind of set me back a little bit. And uh, when COVID first hit, we couldn't come to church. I did well getting online with excitement. I even preached to an empty congregation. 
And so we put it online, and we did those kinds of things. And, and I remember really getting excited about being online church. I thought, man, this is cool. We can do this. We can reach people all over the world, not just in Granbury, but all over the world. Online church. There are people watching us right now online. And uh, I did that for a while, and I, you know, I'd get excited, get up, get start worshiping and listening to the message. And then after a few months, I said, you know, there's no reason to get dressed up. <laughs> then I was laying in bed one morning, and I thought, well, there's no reason to get out of bed. I can watch it right here on my phone or on the TV. And I thought, uh-oh, this isn't good. Uh, this isn't good. I'm getting lazy. And uh, I was so grateful when they said we could go back to the house of God. Oh, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And I'm glad you felt the same way. You feel the same way. A lot of people had not felt that joy yet. Uh, they haven't returned. They're still kind of watching online. But, uh, you know, I, I, I saw a cartoon where a couple was coming into church in their pajamas. And uh, the service was going on. And the preacher was preaching. And he was going, where's that mute button? Where's that mute button? You know, some people are just, yeah, I don't know what people are thinking, but I'm glad you're here today. And I really do, I believe, have a word from the Lord that I want to pass on to you. And if you will get a hold of this word, I'm telling you, it will change your life. So let me tell you something, the word of God. But I, I, I heard this in my spirit. This word today, it's right out of the word of God. It's going to be life to your spirit it's going to bring hope to your soul, and it will bring health to your body. You know, the Scripture says in Psalm 107, He sent His Word and did what? Healed them. And there's a Scripture out of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 8. Now, you've got to listen to this out of the Amplified Bible. And if you know anything about the Amplified Bible, it simply amplifies the, the language, the Hebrew language or the Greek language. Listen to this. I'm talking about... As we pay attention to the Word of God, as we heed what He has to say, it shall be health to your nerves. Some of you need some help with your nerves right now. Uh, we're living, as somebody said, in a crazy world right now. And we're a little like this. Well, the Word of God can bring health to your nerves and sinews. Sinews is a part of your body that we receive vitality and strength, our muscular strength. The Word of God can strengthen us. And it's like marrow. The Word of God goes deep into the marrow of our bones. And the marrow is where white blood cells are developed. That's what builds up our immune system, fights off infection. Think about it. The Word of God can calm your nerves. You can go deep into your bones, and it says it will bring moistening, Amplified Bible says, to your bones. You won't have brittle bones. There's a lot of brittle people walking around today. But it says the Word of God, if we'll listen to it, it'll calm our nerves. It'll be the mainstay of our strength. It will build up our immune system. Oh, we need that. Because they say COVID is still flying. And I, all this news going on, you hear, uh-oh, COVID's on the rise again. Uh-uh. I'm going to take heed to the Word of God. All right, you ready? I want to, I want to give you a word today about, uh, if you entitled it anything, it would be the power of peace and how to walk in it. We need peace. We need to learn to how to walk in His peace in the midst of a, of a crazy world we're living in right now. Now, I am, again, reading out of the Amplified Bible because I love the Amplified Bible and how it reads. This is Jesus speaking to us, speaking to you, speaking to me. It's in the red part of your Bible. If you've got a red letter edition, that means Jesus said it. And so you listen to what he has to say to his disciples, but I believe he's speaking to us too. First thing he says, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My own peace I give to you. My own peace. Think about it. He said, this is the peace that I walked on this earth in. The peace that I had, I'm going to give it to you. He said, matter of fact, I'm going to bequeath it to you. I'm going to put it in my will. Because he's been talking to them about dying. He's going to Jerusalem to die, be crucified, be buried, be resurrected. But he said, I'm going to will something to you, and it's the greatest thing, thing I can will to you. It's my peace. He didn't leave them a lot of money, but he said, I can give you something greater than that. I can give you my peace. Now, it's not the peace that the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, 
Neither let them be afraid. Listen to what the Amplified says. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated, disturbed, fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. Woo, that's good stuff right there. You take that one verse, you meditate on that one verse all week long, and your life will never be the same. I said last week when I shared this message, I said, I could stop right there and just say, y'all go home, just study that right there. But I'm not going to say that because i got some more to say. But you could just take that one verse. And I had to speak this to myself this morning. I said, stop, stop it. Allowing myself and uh, speaking to me to be agitated, disturbed, fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. We must stop. Stop allowing the enemy to steal our peace and steal our confidence in the Lord and in His Word in these difficult days. It's up to us. we got to say, stop it. That's enough. Someone told me one time the word rebuke. If you read it in the language, it means stop it. That's enough. You're stomping your foot down. You're saying, stop it. That's enough. And it's time we start saying that to ourselves. Now, Jesus knew the disciples didn't quite get it. Two chapters later, he says this to them. John 16, These things i spoken unto you. What are these things? He's speaking about his death and resurrection, about his crucifixion upcoming. That in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. Now, he said this. In the world, you will have tribulation. You're going to have trials. There's going to be distress. There's going to be frustration. It's going to be anguish. There's going to be affliction. But be of good cheer. Or in other words, cheer yourself up. Take courage. Be confident. Be certain. Be undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I've deprived it of its power to harm you. And I've conquered it for you. Think about that. Amen. Jesus said he's conquered this world. This world is... Oh, I've never seen anything like it. I'm almost, I can't believe this, but I'm almost 70 years old. And I've not seen anything like I've seen in the past two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen it in my lifetime until now. The world's going mad. I've been reading a book by Rick Renner, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gone Mad, in a World Gone Crazy. How do you keep your head on straight? Well, Jesus told us, he said, I'm going to give you my peace. It's the peace that I walked in when I walked on this earth. I'm going to will it to you. And he's doing that for us that we can walk in perfect peace. Scripture says, what shall we say to all these things going on around us? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, how do we live this out for some people? And I'm telling you, for me at times, it's a hard pill to swallow. It is. Difficult pill. There's some things in the Word of God I read and I go, ooh, that's a hard pill to swallow. Reminded me of a dear lady that was a minister, Marianne Brown. And uh, she, do you all remember Marianne Brown? No, uh, just a, I, she grew up in my father's church. And she was a minister and a right funny lady. But she told a story. Uh, she's since gone to be with the Lord a few years ago. But she t tells a story of, she got sick one day, and she went to uh, her doctor and told, her, told him what the symptoms were, and he gave her some medication. Take this medication. You'll be okay. And she went home, and she got that medication out and took it and uh, didn't get any better. So she went back to the doctor and said, Doc, I, I'm just not any better. He said, well, did you take the medication I gave you? She said, I, you know, Doc, I tried. I took one of those pills, and that pill was so big, I just couldn't get it down. It was, it was a hard pill to swallow. And he stepped back. He's, Marianne, Marianne, that wasn't a pill to swallow. That was a suppository to insert. <laughs> well, she did get better after that. But have you ever had a, my, my wife's always given me vitamins that take this, it's going to be good for you. She, I, I got a vitamin, it was so big, I tried, it got stuck right there. I said, oh, I just don't think I can take these things. But I know if I get it inside of me, man, it's going to bring, it's going to do something to me physically. But I'm telling you, if you get this word inside of you, 
It's going to do something to your spirit, to your soul, and then also to your body. It's so much better than anything the doctor can give you. But we're going to go through this. Even though it may seem like a hard pill to swallow, it's going to be a good pill to swallow. I'm not going to deny that what I see going on around me uh, is a mess. But I know this. I know there's someone living in me that's greater than the mess going on around me. You get that? How are we going to walk in His peace? How are we going to do this? All right, get ready. Take these verses down, and I want you to meditate on them this week. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, and 17. All right? Uh, Rejoice. How often? Always. Pray. How often? Without ceasing. Now, how do you pray without ceasing? Can you come up to the church and get on your knees and just pray all that? No, that's not what he's talking about. Praying without ceasing means you're just acknowledging that the presence of the Lord is with you all the time. I can acknowledge his presence while I'm in Walmart. Matter of fact, I have. Sometimes I just needed to. God, I know you're with me, even in Walmart. And I could breathe out a prayer. Sometimes I could go, I would be going through Walmart. Sometimes you need to do this when you go to Walmart. I was just praying in my spirit. I don't know what people thought about it because I'd sometimes do it out loud. I just needed to pray. But you can pray without ceasing. In everything, do what? Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What's the will of God? That you give Him thanks. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Oh, He's in you. He's ready to pour out that praise through you. Now, Listen to me. When you're standing at the gas pump, you're pumping that gas. Listen to me. I've been on some road journeys recently. Pulled up to the gas tank. Started pumping gas. And usually what it takes me to fill up my car, I looked up and I wasn't even half there yet. I, I got a little thing that I tricked my mind. I fill up when I got a half a tank. So when I go, $30 doesn't seem near as bad as $60, you know. But i made up my mind now. When I'm sitting at the gas pump, Lord, I want to give you thanks that I can put gas in my car. Thank you for that. When I go to the grocery store, have you ever been to the grocery store lately? Some of the shelves are empty. My wife orders now uh, food online sometimes, and they sit, just bring them to us, you know. But she said, we couldn't get that. Now, that's what we normally get. They're out of it. They've been out of canned biscuits for what is up with that? <laughs> out of biscuits? They've been out of canned biscuits and crackers. Man, I thought, what is up with all of that? Well, when you go to the grocery store, you see empty shelf. Mm, it's time to give him thanks. When you hear, you turn on the news. I do it just to catch up. And you hear of wars and rumors of wars. You hear of pandemics and all kinds of awful things. Man, I just stop and have to say, Lord, i got to stop right here. Give you thanks that I know you're a sovereign God. And you know what's going on in this world we're living in. And you've allowed us to be alive in this time. Listen to me. Think about this. Billy Graham's not alive now. Billy Sunday. Think about all... Think about all the great missionaries, men and women of God. My own father, who was a great pastor, but he's not here physically anymore. He's in heaven. A lot of great men and women in heaven, they're not here. But guess who's here? We are. God said, I knew you were going to be here. I knew what was going on in this time, and I knew you would be here. And I ordained you to be here. I needed you to be here. So don't fret what's going on in this world, because I've got this under control. Have you ever changed the price of gasoline by complaining about it? Oh, well, have you? Man, I, when I first gas started going up, I'd hear it on the news, and I was complaining, murmuring about all that. I can't believe gas prices. I can't believe this. is It's just murmuring. And then the Lord said, take, take a lesson from the children of Israel. Numbers 11.1, 1, just listen to this. And the people complained. The Lord heard it, and it displeased him. Well, to me, 
after complaining and seeing judgment come, I mean, there were fires, there were plagues, there were snakes, there was leprosy. Because they complained. And God said, come on, guys. Look, I brought you out of Egypt. I've given you manna in the wilderness. They complained about that. They complained. They complained. God said, I, I hear, I'm hearing you now. I'm tired of this. We have no meat. Okay, I'll send you some quail. And the quail, they ate so much of it, it started running out their nose, the Bible says. And God, in the midst of that, got so angry at the people. They said, okay, send a plague. And Moses had to say, oh, God, don't no, please don't do that. And after several thousand died, the plague stopped. It looks like they would have thought back, okay, I'm not going to complain more. Can you remember what happened last time? Granddaddy lost his life. I better not complain. But guess what they did? Complained again. And the Lord heard them, and the Lord was displeased. Psalm 107 says, or 106, verse 24, they despised the Lord. They did not believe His word. They complained they did not heed his voice. Life and death are where? In the power of the tongue. And you're going to eat the fruit of whatever you speak. You speak life, you eat the fruit of life. You speak death, you eat the fruit of death. Well, I choose life myself. Life and death. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good. To edify people. To minister grace to those that are listening to you. Let me say something. People are listening to you. They're listening to what you say. In your household, on your job, when you're at the grocery store or wherever you are, people are listening to what you got to say. By your words, the Scripture says, you're condemned. By your words, you're justified. Why are you condemned? You're condemned because you're not trusting God. If you complain and murmur about everything that's going on, you say you don't trust God. We're not trusting His sovereignty. We don't think He knows what He's doing. But God knows exactly what He's doing. Here's a scripture that I have to speak to myself quite often. This is one of my favorite, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That word formed means it's personal. The devil knows what will get you the worst personally. And he forms a weapon against you personally. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you have the right to condemn that word. And most of the time, guess whose word it is? It's your own words. Oh, there's people that say things about you maybe that you have to stop. But most of the time it's you complaining inside yourself feeling guilt about certain things, and you just condemn yourself. And you got to say, nope, stop it, that's enough. I, I'm stopping that right now. Because I'm putting my trust in the Lord. Complaining is sin. And whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith, that means you're not trusting God. Faith says, I'm trusting God. He's going to work all of this out for my glory. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He's going to direct your path. In the midst of everything that's going on, He's going to direct you. How do we do this? How do we walk in His peace and confidence? How do we rejoice and pray without ceasing? We don't quench the Spirit. Jesus, right before He left, He said, I'm going to send somebody. I'm going to send a helper. It's going to be someone just like me. He's not just going to be among you. He's going to live inside of you. He's going to be your helper. He'll be your counselor. He'll be your friend. He'll be one just standing by. He'll be your comforter. Wow. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our what? Weaknesses. Anybody ever feel weak <laughs> lately? The Holy Spirit is there to help in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we should, or even how to pray for it. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which we don't know how to utter. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know what? All things. Work together for good. Not all things are good, but all things work together for good to those, not for everybody. It's to those who love God 
and those who are the called according to His promise. If you do not know Jesus, you've not been born again. This, it's not going to work for you till you surrender your life to Jesus and get born again. And get the Holy Spirit to come live in you. I like Rick Warren's illustration. He says it's like baking a cake. You can put out all the ingredients of a cake, and by themselves, they're not so good. Flour, a spoonful of flour, mm, not be good. A little bit of baking soda, no. Not, not good. A little fat or Crisco oil, that wouldn't be good. How about sugar? Well, you can mm, taste a little bit of it, but uh, not too much of it. But all the ingredients of a cake, not good by themselves, but you mix them all together. Man, you mix that up, put it in the oven, and cook that up. Mm. A white cake with chocolate icing. I'm telling you, that is good stuff right there. That's the way it is with God. I just wrote down high gas prices. That's not good. Inflation. That's not good. War. Not good. Pandemics. Not good. All of these things are not good. But if we will just stop, Lord, I'm trusting you that all these things are coming at us right now. They're not good, but they're going to work together for my good. And I choose to give you thanks. I choose to rejoice in the middle of what I'm going on, in the middle of what I don't understand. Then we're going to be able to walk in His peace. I like Philippians 4, 6. Rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. And again, I say it. Rejoice. Now, Paul wrote this while in prison, locked up in prison. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is coming soon. I really believe that. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything and everything. But by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, which means it doesn't make sense. God's peace and the world we're living in does not make sense. When you're walking around with peace in your heart, with a smile on your face, people are going to look at you and say, hey, what is wrong with you? Didn't you just listen to the news? Yes, I did. But I got somebody who gave me some good news, better news. And they're going to be looking at you. What an opportunity to share the gospel. Not join in with their fretting and their anxiety. I want to be the one to say, let me tell you about the one who can bring you peace. Give you that joy. It's a, it's a peace that doesn't make sense. And that peace will guard your hearts and guard your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul wrote it again. Let the peace of God rule your hearts to which you were called into one body. Be thankful. Listen, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another. Man, we need to be speaking the Word of God to each other. You need to find a scripture you can just carry around with you. Every day of the week, just find you a scripture and just carry it around with you. And when you find somebody, just speak the Word of God to them. Admonish them, build them up in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Oh, I want to be one who is giving thanks to God in the midst of what I don't understand. Matter of fact, I, it may get worse as far as the world's concerned. Matter of fact, Jesus said, before, before I come again, and right before I come, the birth pains are going to get closer and closer together. It's going to be one thing after another thing after another thing after another thing. We got out of the pandemic. Oh, good, we're out of this pandemic. We can go travel now. Gas prices went up. We're through the pandemic. Oh, war broke out. One thing after another thing after another thing. God, it's going to increase. The closer we come to giving birth to the second coming, the closer the birth pains are going to be together. But when Jesus comes, all oh, the joy. Paul said, the light affliction I've been through. He called being shipwrecked out in the ocean for a couple of days and being beaten 39 stripes five times, being stoned and left for dead, put in prison. Paul said, well, that's a light affliction. It's going to be light when I see Jesus. It's going to be nothing like it. 
And so we need to be feeling the same way. Can we just give him some thanks? God thought that was so important that he said, Moses, Moses, I want you to put in, in, into the law that I want my people to bring me a Thanksgiving offering from time to time. Hey, I want Aaron. Hey, get them together. Get the Levites together. Build me a Thanksgiving choir. We'll just let this choir lead thanks from time to time. Matter of fact, he said to one of the kings, Hey, king, there's an enemy out there bigger than you are, but I'm going to tell you what to do. I got a word. Get the Thanksgiving choir together. Put them out front of the army. Now, the army said, yeah, that's a good idea. The Thanksgiving choir said, uh, are you sure about this? Yeah, get out there and just offer up thanks and praise to God. And they did, and what happened? God said, ambushments against the enemy, and they won a great victory that day. The Thanksgiving choir. How awesome is that? The Bible says, lift up a voice of thanksgiving. Lift up your voice of praise. Be thankful and Offer to him a sacrifice. It may be a sacrifice, but it will be a sacrifice of praise. When you don't feel like praise him, praise him anyway. You don't feel like rejoicing, rejoice anyway. Pumping that gas. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you. This is a sacrifice of praise to you. We're going to praise him. We're going to give him thanks anyway. That's the word of God. That, even though it may be a hard pill to swallow when you're in the midst of all the trouble, you swallow it, boy, it's going to bring life into your spirit, to your soul, and to your body. Can you get this word? Yeah. Oh, Lord, let this get in you. I'm telling you, it's going to change your life if you let it. I preached this to myself probably at least 50 times since the Lord started giving me that message. I drive around. I go on prayer drives. That's kind of what I love to do. And I, just, and I said, that just cost me $20, that prayer drive right there. But... <laughs> I said, it's worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. But I get it, and I preach this to myself. I drove around Pecan Plantation, and my brother-in-law, sister, uh, sister-in-law, Susan's brother lives in Pecan Plantation, and I got in my car this time. I'm going on a prayer drive, and I just drove around Pecan Plantation watching the deer. But I had, this, I had this word out in front of me, and I was preaching this to myself. And I spoke, I said, stop being agitated. Stand up. Who's living in you? And I've been get st- I was talking to myself in Psalms and Hymns, a spiritual song. So now I encourage you to do the same. I'm going to leave you this message today. I want to ask the Holy Spirit right now to take this message. I don't want, you, I don't want it to be stolen when you walk out in the parking lot, all right? Because there's an enemy out there wait, waiting to steal the seed. He just he wants to take it away from you. He doesn't want you to have this word because he knows if you get this word, he's in trouble. So let me pray for the soul of your heart right now. I'm going to pray this seed goes deep. Lord, right now I'm praying for your people. You sent me here to Granbury to minister this word today. And Lord, this is a life-changing word. Lord, it will bear fruit for years to come. And Lord, right now I speak to the enemy. I rebuke him. I say he will not steal this seed. This seed will go deep into our heart and it will bear fruit this week. Others will ask us about why we seem to be walking in such peace. And we're going to tell them about you. And Lord, even here today, if there's someone in this room, someone watching online that doesn't know you, because this word is not for everybody, it's for those who believe in you. And Lord, if there's someone that's not said yes to you, let this be the day. Let this be the day. They say yes to Jesus. If you're here in this room today, if you're watching online, let me say something to you. This is the day the Lord is calling you to Him. And you can experience this peace and freedom from all the agitation and turmoil you're feeling in your life. If you'll just say yes to Jesus right now. Right now. Just say yes, Jesus. I want you. Come into my life. And make all things new. Lord, I receive you now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 Did you get it? You got the word? You ready to go live it out? Let's go live it out. Come on, Pastor. Pastor, I come up here. I, mean, I want to pray for you. I, I just feel like the Lord wants me just to pray for you. Get your wife up here. Yvette, come on up here. And... Uh,
I'm going to pray for you and just speak a blessing over this man of God because he is truly a man of God. And again, he is the prophet of this house. And he's got a word. Next week, he's going to bring a word. And he's, 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 he, he studies, he prays. He, who's bringing the word next week? Oh, he's bringing the word. All right, we got some prophets in the house. Right? We got some prophets in the house. But anybody that stands up behind this podium, it, he doesn't just let anybody stand here. He doesn't. I, I know because it's been four years since I stood here before. He, he doesn't just let anybody stand here. No. We went through COVID. I know that. But we've been trying to work this out for a while. But I want to pray over this man and woman of God that God's going to, he, he's got a future. He's got a plan. He's here in Granbury for a reason. You know what? People are moving to Granbury. They're getting out of the big city, and they're moving to Granbury. They're building 700 new homes just in Pecan Plantation. Think about all the people coming this way. Ooh, God got you here for such a time as this. Lord, I'm thankful for this man of God and his wife. And Lord, thankful for this congregation. Lord, there's something stirring in Granbury. There's people that you're putting on their heart, and they don't even know why. They're just getting out of the big city, out of the rat race. And they're coming here, and they're bringing their children and bringing their teenagers. And, Lord, they don't know why, but there's a bigger reason than just move in, into a nice little town. Lord, there's a purpose you have, and that's for them to come to know you. And, Lord, I pray for this man of God that you would give him that word, the prophetic word. Lord, I pray for the prophets of this house. and Lord, I pray for this congregation. Lord, they would rise up, and as they're out and about... Lord, in this community, Lord, they'll let their light shine. They'll walk in that peace. Lord, they'll walk in thanksgiving. And people will come to know you for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you, my friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord.
Yes, Lord. Be magnified by my life, my song, my walk, and my talk. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sonny. Can we show him some appreciation? It's been over four years, and it's not because of the lack of skill. I tell you, man, I'm fed. I'm ready. In conclusion, maybe you're a believer, but you've not been following the Lord with your whole heart. You've been dragging your feet, maybe. Follow him at a distance. Maybe even kind of following him all the way back to the point, well, I believe in God. But no, do you believe Jesus is your Lord? I challenge you today to commit yourself to following him. Join us in our other gatherings. Come back next week. Pray daily. Begin to worship. And when tempted to complain or be alarmed, that's a signal, right? To turn your cares into prayers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace. Go get them, Tigers. God bless you. Praise be magnified.